Long before the sun comes up and despite a steady rain, the Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force begins its day. After all, what better time of day to arrest a violent criminal than while they're asleep? It's 5.30 in the morning outside an abandoned gas station in Riverdale, where a detailed briefing has taken place about their first target. Deputy U.S. Marshal Mark Blackwood has developed information that Wallace Loggins, a Texas fugitive on the run for eight years, is believed to be in a home nearby, staying with a friend. But supposedly they're dealing drugs and uh, selling guns out of the basement. Loggins' mugshot is passed around to be memorized, and a plan of attack is mapped out in detail. So one of you will cover the front door, and then one of you swing around to the left. You'll see the basement door right there. Every possible scenario has gone over thoroughly. There are, like you said, there's vehicles in the driveway. Let's make sure we box them in if we can and clear them as we pass them. After several knocks at the front door, a woman lets the fugitive squad inside. There are several adults living in the home and two children, but no logins. Our target's not at the residence right now. They are familiar with them. Um, un unfamiliar with how long it's been since he's been here. There is a sense of disappointment, but there are more fugitives to catch. He's got a criminal history of aggravated assault, terroristic threats and acts, carrying concealed weapon, possession of methamphetamine, cocaine, possession of a firearm during a felony, etc., etc. Police, come to the door! After one more disappointment, their luck changed. At daybreak, fugitive Tyreek Eggleston was asleep in his apartment while task force members took up positions. Open the front door now. No one answers. We weren't going to go away. We continued to knock, and then eventually we, we did hear a sound of an individual inside the apartment. Every opportunity is given to the fugitive to answer the door. To gain entry into the residence without destroying any property. But at the end of the day, if we need to get in there and get a fugitive, we'll break the door down. They were about to enter through a sliding glass door in the back of the apartment when Eggleston showed his face and was taken into custody. Hey guys, we're clear. Man, do y'all have a warrant to go in there? <laughs> Where'd you go to law school? Don't worry about all that. Did y'all have a warrant to come in and search? Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Uh, the next briefing, ironically, is in a church parking lot, and the target is a fugitive from New Jersey, Dawn Germany. She's a former stripper, AKA her name is Butter, or Butters. Deputy Marshal Callie Sola says she's been keeping a low profile in Atlanta, but still breaking the law. She is on Craigslist currently and Backpage trying to make ends meet. Police, come to the door! Germany is taken into custody without incident. It has been a hit or miss day for the task force, but the best result is no one got hurt. And in the 15 years since its inception, no one on the task force has been killed though there are times they've been shot at. Within probably the last year, there's been maybe four to five for our office. They put their life on the line in relative anonymity, but Task Force Leader Chief Inspector Keith Booker says there are enough rewards in what they do, including the appreciation of the agencies that they seek fugitives for. They know what we do, and, um, and we're not worried about um, getting the credit for it so much. One of the biggest sources of pride is in a hallway outside the task force's office. They call it Murderer's Row. The faces of hundreds of murder suspects adorn the walls. Suspects that have been captured by the Southeast Regional Fugitive Task Force since it began in 2003. It is not only a source of pride, but a reminder why they do what they do. But you also think about um, how many lives the people um, on those posters have wrecked families they've wrecked um, and the impact they've the negative impact they've had on other people 